So now I would like to welcome the incredible young women who've been part of creating and forging this program to the stage. And the first young woman that I'd like to introduce you all to is Colleen Kimsey from Mills College, who is going to introduce our international guests. Good evening. Um, I'm Colleen Kimsey, hopefully, obviously. And I have had the really great pleasure of participating in the Young Women Speaking the Economy Project. From till November till now, I've been part of the lively, always opinionated, sometimes argumentative, and always hopeful discussion group on Facebook. I've learned about the Civil War firsthand in Sudan from new friends at the Afad University that Danish women, the lucky, lucky students, are paid to go to school and that young women everywhere don't want to move back in with their parents after graduation. <laughs> Money and gender, the last two taboo topics. How empowering to talk about them both and the intersectionality of, the, of both with a cohort of peers who don't embrace the rhetoric of despair that so often is the popular meme. On behalf of my fellow students at Mills College and all the international participants, we're very excited to see you here tonight. One student participant from each college has traveled to be here with us, and I'd like to recognize everyone on stage who's participated. From the University of Aarhus in Denmark, Christina Andersen, From Afad University for Women in the Sudan, Iman Asim. From Miriam College in the Philippines, Valin Salanga. From Mills College, Jessica Glennon Zukoff. Also from Mills College, Dana Marlson. And last, from Mills College, Kirby Kimber. I'd also like to acknowledge faculty and staff from the partner universities and ask them to stand as their names are read. Annette Larna from Aarhus University History Department in Denmark. Arwa Salah from the School of Management in Afad University for Women in the Sudan. Maria Cecilia Marzan Bartolet from the Social Sciences and International Studies Department in Mer Merriam College in the Philippines. <clears throat> and now it's my pleasure to share with you a preview of the exhibition consisting of excerpts of the media projects that we created. The incredible diversity of projects kind of boggles my mind. Uh, my friend Jessica insightfully showed how women of different class backgrounds make up their bodies to face the day. I wrote about the really weird industry of egg donation and how hard it is to be a woman in debt with something that people other, others want but you can't give up. Topics range from constitutional equality in the Sudan to the difficulty of leaving your real job to go back to school to Dana's sound installation as a commentary on women in the workforce. All in all, these projects represent something that's previously been missing from the dialogue about the global recession. The voices of the women who are about to remake the global economy as we know it into a force for inclusion and empowerment. Thank you.
everyone, this is Ali Altman. I'm 21 years old. I'm Sudanese from Egyptian roots. Um, I was born up in Cairo and it has been seven years since I came back to Sudan. I'm super excited to meet all of you and get to work as a team and share our different knowledge, beliefs and conditions. And by the way, this is Khartoum Airport in case you're coming. See you guys soon. Bye! I'm a student of international studies, and now that I am about to graduate, a lot of things have changed since I stepped into Miriam College four years ago. It seems that today, at this moment, I am forced to grow up and finally start being an adult. It frightens me to no end of thinking about my future. It was a million dollar question that most of us are asking ourselves. I am about to graduate. Now what? In many ways, I think the decision my parents made in their youth have affected me. They have always encouraged me to follow my dreams and do whatever makes me happy in life, just like they did. I left my job as a hairdresser for the opportunity of becoming a student at the University of Aarhus, the second biggest city in Denmark. Even though the Danish state supports all Danish students financially, I had to make some material sacrifices to make ends meet. These material sacrifices have not been an actual problem. For the first time in a long time, I'm truly happy. When you're getting married, you start doing all this research. When your dream future job prospect is become an academic, it's already kind of hard. There aren't that many jobs out there and you have to work really, really hard and compete with a lot of people for very few slots. A good student job has however become more difficult to come by because of the financial crisis. Although I enjoy my current job in which I work as a helper for a disabled girl and I feel it is meaningful, I am continually looking for a more relevant student job and should the opportunity arise, I definitely take it so I'm in a better position to find my dream job when I graduate. The financial crisis has caused me to have many concerns about my future. I fear that upon graduation I might find myself in unemployment or working in a job that I might not enjoy or that does not match my skills. At the same time I fear that the social system we have could be threatened by the crisis and many politicians point out that our welfare system might fall behind compared to the rest of the world. I was still studying before the financial crisis. Uh, I had two jobs and I really earned a lot of money because I could work as much as, as I wanted to. For those who are in a financial rough spot, it also always comes down to tough decisions. My son Adam, who is four years old, he really wants to play football. But I can't afford to buy the equipment and the proper shoes. So all in all, I decided it's better to get food on the table every night than him playing soccer.